God, I thank you right now for this day you've given us. Thank you, God, that you have kept us again, provided for us. You are a peace giver. You are a way maker. You are everything that we need. And we give you all the honor and glory. Now, Lord, speak through your servant, to your people, yes, God. both physically here and those who are tuned in. Yes, we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. DMC, help me welcome all of our Yay! online viewers today. We thank you for tuning in where you, wherever you are, whether you're in the local area or out of the area. We, we're glad that God called you to be with us this morning. We believe that God has a word for all of us today. Amen. Amen. Well, grab your Bibles or your devices and turn to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Amen. Philippians chapter 3. Uh, we're going to begin reading just four <laughs> small verses. And then we're going to get into what God has for us. Philippians 3. Verse 17 through 21. Uh, amen. All right. Verse 17 says this. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and think only about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. As I'm preparing to teach this message today, I was thinking back to a conversation I had uh, last Sunday following a service. I was speaking with someone who uh, they said that they needed to get a newer car. Mm. They need to replace their car. They said that their car had served them well, but it was either it was 10 years old, they'd had it for 10 years. And uh, how many of y'all know when your car gets older, it starts to have all kinds of issues? Oh, yeah. And no matter what you fix on it, it's like something else come up. The <laughs> minute you fix it on it. You know, and so they were they were kind of smart. They said, "I'm trying to get it ahead of the game before it goes completely out, and I have to get it replaced. I'm stuck, and I got to buy something at the last minute. I want to start looking now for a good replacement for this vehicle." So we were talking about the, the car that they own and the make and, and model of it, the manufacturer. And I told them, I said, "You know what? Have you considered another vehicle that they make? I, I, I kind of like SUVs. I mean, nothing against cars. I got used to sitting up a little bit higher, getting in easier and out." And I said, there's a particular SUV that the same company makes that I, I, uh, I rented it and took it on a long road trip. And I was like, I like this thing. I said, that might actually work for you. And they was like, you know what? I'm going I'm to consider that. I said, so what you do, you go to the dealership today. You ask the salesman, hey, I want to test drive a demo. I mean, how many of y'all test drive or have ever test driven a car? Yeah. How many of y'all test drove before you bought a car? Yeah. Okay. Because normally you want to, I mean, there are some things in life that you will just trump. You know, you may go to the store and you see a blouse with the pants. Oh, I'll try it. You know, I don't got time to try it. I'm going to buy it. If it don't work, I'll bring it back, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there are other things you might want to get, but you're going to get some reviews about it, right? Amen. I mean, before you go to certain restaurants, you're going to go to Yelp or you're going to ask somebody. Absolutely. You know, I think I've sold a lot of, a lot of food for Hangry City. Okay. I think I, they should give me commission. Okay. So I'm going to send everybody, go to Hangry City, try their sliders and tater tots, mm -hmm. you know? And so, I mean, y'all would try that on the review, right? Yeah. But when it comes to a major purchase, you want to see that thing, how that thing works, how that thing fits, how that right. thing, you get into a car, it might look good, but it might not have the kick you got, you need, you know? For some folk, you know, you need a little bit more horsepower. Amen. Or you need something with a little bit more bass. I mean, uh, Sister Matika got to have subwoofers in her car. Right. She can't just drive any car. <laughs> you got to feel her when she pulls up. You can't just know she's coming. Right. You got to have some more bounce to the house in her vehicle. Right. <laughs> But when you talk about a major, something that's life-changing, and believe me, a car note is life-changing. Yeah. You don't believe me, pay a car off. Yeah. Ain't that like celebration time? It's like a pay raise. Yeah. You pay a car off, like, oh my goodness. Cause back in the day, you could buy a car $200, a month. You can't do that, that costs that for gas. Yeah. And so, I was telling her and encouraging her to do the demo, do the test drive of it. And I began to think of, of something, and this is gonna really set the stage. But let me ask you three quick questions. If someone were exploring the claims of Christianity, if someone didn't know anything about Christ, but they were exploring 
and looking whether or not they should commit their life to this Jesus that you, you worship and you come to church and you show up on a Sunday morning for them. Can they test drive your life for a demo? Wow. Yes. Wow. Can they test drive your life? Can your life be a demo for them? Yes. Question number two, could a newborn or a young believer follow your pattern of Christian life and grow into a healthy disciple? Because somebody who's a new believer, just got saved, don't really know anything, or uh, they, they've been around just a little while, but they're young in the faith, could they say, hey, I want to spend some time with you and do the things that you do so that I can learn how to walk this walk out? Could they do that? Question number three, if no to either or both of those questions, why can't they? If they ask you one of those two questions and your answers are no to either one or both of those, and you've been saved any length of time, why can't they? Today, I want to talk to you about demonstrating or destroying Christ. Demonstrating or destroying Christ. If we're believers, we should be able to be test-driven by somebody who doesn't know Christ or is new to the faith to know how to live this Christian life. So I want to just share some things with you um, that I think is so apropos. I really want this to be a kind of a soul-searching conversation. We're just at home, and we're just having a talk on the couch. And we're just discussing some, some things. And I really want you and me to examine and look inside ourselves to see, Lord, do I fit the criteria? Mm. And the first thing I want to share with you is that every day, you and I are either demonstrating or destroying Christ. Every day that we live, in our walk with the Lord, Mo, <laughs> people are looking at us and determining whether what we say we believe, if we really believe it. Amen. If, if, if people could, could really put us on an on a, on a, on a, on a exam, on a test, and, and cut us up and open us up, would they find Jesus on the inside of us? You know, we just saying, I feel the presence of the Lord is here. Yeah. Well, the presence goes with us. Amen. So I, as much as I enjoyed the worship, and, and I believe God blessed our time in that singing of that song, his presence got to leave the park. His presence just can't stay in Sycamore and meet me here next Sunday. Amen. See, his presence got to go with me. And Moses said this, God, if your presence don't go, then don't send me. I don't want to go anywhere that you're not, Lord. And, and here's the thing. This demonstration of Christ it's not just for the pastors. Amen. It's not just for deacons. Amen. It's not just for church mothers. Amen. It's not for super saints. Amen. It's for everybody who say they believe in Christ. Amen. So no matter what your age, if you're a teenager, then God expects to have some demonstration in your teen life. Amen. If you're a child, God says, I can live in you. Matter of fact, some of the people God used greatly were children. Yeah. Children and teens. Look at, look at Mary. Look at, look at Samuel. Look at David. Those were all young people. Who, who de demonstrated the power of God in their life. Matter of fact, if you're young, I want to encourage you, sell out now. Because I'll tell you, a lot of folk would tell you if they could do it all over again, they would not wait to get all in. Amen? So you're either demonstrating. Yeah, let's, let's look at these things here, how we demonstrate or we destroy Christ in, in the view of other people. Four areas. One, our speech. Our speech either demonstrates Jesus Christ has changed us or we destroy our testimony. Uh, Ephesians 4 says, uh, let no corrupt speech come out of your mouth. Uh -huh. What does that mean? In other words, we should be saying stuff that encourages people, yeah. not destroy. We should not be, Christians should be gossips. How many of y'all agree Christians Amen. should be gossips? Amen. We shouldn't be gossips. We should be building people up. Um, we, we should not be uh, spreading stuff about other people. Oh. 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 Well, praise the Lord. That's okay. God's got it. God's got it. Amen. He's got it. Um, the Bible says in Colossians 3, 8, check this out. Put filthy communication out of your mouth. James says you can't have clean water and dirty water come out of the same spigot. If you and I know the name of Christ, we shouldn't praise God and then go cuss folk out. Hey, how many of y'all don't think Christians should cuss folk out? Hey, Amen. Because it says something. When you, when you tell somebody, come to church with me, and you see what they're singing, then you see them on Facebook or social media, or you see them in person and you make them mad, 
And they know all kind of foreign language. Because I'm telling you, it impacts, it impacts me. I was going to the store last night. I, I was out, and I said I had to run, and I wasn't near where I normally go, and I was in a different area. And I was like, I need to go in the store. But I really don't want to go, but I'm going to push this to go anyway. And as I was going in, I just heard, like, the loudest women in the world. <laughs> and they're driving. You know you got to be talking loud to, to me to hear your whole conversation while you're driving through the parking lot. But everywhere it was like, beep, 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 beep. That blank, 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 blank. And then they got out the car and somebody pulled up their dude. And it's like, how did blank you been? Blank in the blank? Like, I was like, I was like, John Lewis them didn't get beat for that. And as I was going to the store, they was walking in front of me. And I was just going, and I said, do I really need this? And they were just like, blank in the blank, blank, blank. I said, man, I ain't going to the store. I don't really want to be. I'd had enough. I'm going to go home and shower. <laughs> But our speech should, 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 should draw people, not repel people to Christ. Amen? Amen? Our speech should be full of faith and not fear and doubt and, 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 and grief and problems all the time. Our speech. Second thing, our attitudes. Our attitudes should demonstrate Christ, not destroy Christ. Philippians 2.5 says, have the same attitude as in Christ. Christ had a spirit of humility. Christians should be humble. Amen? Christians should have a humility about them because here's the thing. Everything we got, God gave it to us. Yeah. So why are we bragging about it? Listen, you can be glad for what God gave you, but don't brag about it to put somebody else down. Yeah. Why? Because if it's, if it's something he gave you, especially materially, you can lose it. Yeah. You, you floss in the day, you might be catching the bus next week. Because yeah. the economy can change. I mean, I know the economy can change. Yeah. You could be working one day, and next day they tell you, hey, well, uh, we downside, we right side, we, you gone. You got to have a spirit of humility. That's the spirit that Christ had. He was humble. He said, I, I'm humble and let God exalt me. The Bible said God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. If you humble yourself, God will elevate you. But if you elevate yourself, God will humble you. Third uh, thing, we should be like Christ in our actions. Philippians 2, 4 says, don't look out just for your best interest. Look out for the best interest of others. I'm telling you, ain't nothing worse than dealing with somebody who is very selfish and has always got to be about them. Mm. Hey, hey, some of y'all dealt with people like that. Some of y'all got family members. And some of you are really good. It's all about them. And when you try to let them know it's about them, have y'all seen people turn the table yeah. and put it back on you? Yeah. Yeah. When you try to tell them, like, you know... You should learn to share. See, that's what I'm talking about. You always trying to pick on me just because I ate all the pizza. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, at the 12th flight, you thought about somebody else. <laughs> but that's an attitude, an action of let me see what I can do for you. How many of y'all realize you come alive when you serve other people? Yeah. When you find other people to bless, yeah. especially with the intention that they can't do nothing for me, or I'm not expecting anything back from them, man, that feels so good. That you're like, Lord, thank you for letting me be a blessing to somebody else. That's an attitude that demonstrates Christ. And fourth, and this is really powerful, y'all, not just our actions, our fourth, our reactions. How we react. First Peter 2.23 says, Jesus talking about him, says, he did not retaliate when insulted nor threatened revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. And I'll be honest, I said, Lord, help me be like Jesus. Because I don't retaliate all the time. I used to be like that. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. You hit me, we're going to be fighting. I, I, I did. Whether we fight physically or fighting in, a, in an argument, or like that, it, I ain't gonna lie, it felt good to my flesh. Hey, like, oh, I'm gonna get, you know. Yeah. But now I've learned, you know what? If I fight, God's not gonna fight for me. Yeah. Right. And I'll always be fighting. And here's the thing people are always gonna talk about you. Always. How many of y'all been talked about in 2020? Yeah. <laughs> you ain't raising your hand, you, you just don't know. This is what I talk about you right now. <laughs> Get on my nerves. You're going to get talked about. You're going to get mistreated. 
You're going to encounter something that's unfair. You're going to be good to some people, and they're going to turn around and not be good to you. You're going to bless some people, and they're going to turn around and dog you out to other people. And it's what? It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. But to be like Jesus, he said, I'll trust it to God. God will take care of me if I don't try to fight my battles. But if I'm trying to fight them, you'll be like somebody fighting all the time. There's a bottle every day. Yeah. Especially if you go on social media. People disagree all day long on social media. Yeah. You can't fight them. You can't argue with somebody. Don't argue with people on social media. Yeah. Some yeah. folks looking, some folks are goading you. They want to argue. They're bored. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they want you to come and argue with them. Let it go. Yeah. So, so we had to demonstrate and not destroy Christ. Paul goes on to say this. He says, some people live like enemies of the cross, and they are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite, and they brag about shameful things. So let me tell you this. Sadly, many people in this age, they live what's called sloppy agape. Sloppy agape. Agape is the God kind of love. God love me. So have you ever heard that God love you? Yes. God love, and he does. He loves us tremendously. The problem is, we don't always love God back. You ever been in a one-sided relationship? Yeah. Where you all, you're doing all the calling? Yeah. All the texting. I hate when you people like hey, uh, call me sometimes. You got my number too. Call me. Don't give me no homework assignment. I was thinking about you. Well, you should have called me then. That's the sixth time this year you were thinking about me. <laughs> Down my number. It's my number and a dime. Call me anytime. I date myself. Y'all don't know about no number and a dime. Come on now. <laughs> Here's my Twitter. Call me so I won't be bitter. <laughs> but sometimes we live a sloppy and goppy life and listen, we live sloppy and we don't love God back and we live a life that dishonors him it breaks his heart and guess what, it should break our heart Paul was crying, Paul was crying over these believers or people who claim to be Christians because he knew, he said listen this does, not, this does not fit the image of who you are now you're not demonstrating who you say you are and some of y'all don't even know God and that hurt, hurt him too because he said you're going to die and go to hell thinking you know Jesus. And it's sad to say that there are going to be people, the Bible said many are on the road to destruction. But they think they, they know Christ. And they're on the what road to eternal separation from God. And that's heartbreaking. But Paul tells us, he said, listen, this is some of the things they do. They proudly, publicly display and talk about things they should be ashamed of. This generation has no shame sometimes. I don't, I don't mean you all as an age group. I'm saying in our generation now, People put stuff out and say stuff that we never would have said. I see stuff that people say on TV or on social media. Or on, 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 I, I watched a woman on, on uh, Judge Mathis this week. I got to find another show, y'all. Like every week he got a Judge Mathis. All right. I'm going to get some more, but I, I can't help it. It's amazing the things that people will say on national TV. In front of a whole audience. You ever watch stuff and you get embarrassed for people? Yes, you ever put your head down like, no, no, don't, don't say that. Oh, Jesus. Like they're in part of your family. Like you got to go home and see them now, you know. I watched this woman say stuff. I wouldn't even repeat what she said. And I was like, are you, you could get a check for that. <laughs> and she had no shame about it. That's what Paul said. Paul said these people are proud of stuff they should be ashamed of. He even goes on to say, listen, these are people who are led by their flesh, uh -huh. not by the Spirit of God. Let, let me read it to you all so you all know I'm not making it up. Galatians 5, 19 through 23. This talks about how you differentiate between the flesh, that's your old nature, and the Spirit of God. It says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Uh -huh. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, mm -hmm. idolatry, mm -hmm. sorcery, hostility, yeah. quarreling. Jealousy. That's half the reality shows on TV right there. <laughs> Rage, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, other sins like these. Listen to what, what, what Paul says. I warn you, as I did before, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. You're fooling yourself if you think this is your lifestyle. I ain't saying if you slipped and fell and God restored you. You live like this, this is your consistent habit. You're fooling yourself if you think you're saved and you're going to heaven. This is not the lifestyle of a Christian. But there are many who live like this, 
And they proclaim that they follow Christ. And, and, and God says, no. He said, the last day, I'm going to say to you, I didn't know you. You weren't a part of my kingdom. You didn't walk with me. This is not how my kids live. He says, but the, the, the fruit of the Spirit, it's not God's kids live. They have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these. Ain't nobody making a no law saying you can't love people. How I many you know they make laws about drunkenness? Yeah. You drive on the street drunk, they will pull you over. Ain't nobody pull you over, you're just too joyous. Yeah. You got a ticket. <laughs> no, this is what Paul says. Paul says, you have to be led by the Spirit of God. If you're God's children, you're led by the Spirit. If you're not led by the Spirit, you're not His. There's a clear delineation. And listen, God ain't, ain't sharing joint custody. God don't give you up to the devil for a few days a week and then you come back and live in his house. God said, this is how my children should live. So as I close, I'm going to give you this. What are the steps to move from destroying Christ to demonstrating Christ? Because here's the thing. If we're destroying them with our reputation, we need to know how to get back on the other side, right? Amen? Don't you want to know how to demonstrate Christ? If you, am I the only one here? How many of y'all want to demonstrate Christ in your day-to-day life? I'm going to give you two quick, easy ways to demonstrate Christ. This is phrase going on, talking about uh, your authentic... Anybody being searched for by the police around here? If you are, just put your hands so we can get you on out of here now. <laughs> CPD is flying around. <laughs> but uh, how many of you hear this phrase, I'm living my authentic life? I got to be my authentic self, my real self. You know, and we, we, we love authenticity. You know, people say, I hate fake. How do y'all hate fake people? Don't like How do y'all hate people that you know they in your face smiling, but behind you, they backstab? Yeah. Just fake. See, we like this phrase, authentic self, but we forget who our authentic selves are sometimes. Uh-huh. See, because the Bible says this, to remember who you are, Paul says, you are an ambassador for Christ, and you're a traveler. Mm-hmm. See, we're travelers. How many of y'all ever travel somewhere and you like where you stayed at? How many of y'all ever stay somewhere like get an ba- uh, Airbnb or a nice hotel yeah. or a rental or, you know, you've been in some lodge down in Tennessee or something like that? You know, my wife and I, we, 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 we stayed at the Four Seasons one time. Man, you ain't stayed till you stayed at Four Seasons. I'm telling you, I mean, we pulled up. They're like, how are you doing, Mr. Baker? I'm like, how do they know me? I'm kid- I kid you not. I was like, how in the world... I have never been here. I don't remember sending a picture of myself to them. I just look like a Mr. Baker to them, I guess. I stepped differently. Y'all, I'm doing great, and thank you for checking. You know. We'll be standing at the suite, please. Thank you for get my bags. <laughs> they got our bags. The room was fabulous. This is the best sleeping mattress ever. Ever. Wow. Ever. Wow. Ever. I mean, you know how some of y'all take towels from the hotel? I know, y'all know y'all got some H's in y'all house and your last name ain't Harris <laughs> I'll say baby get the match get the match baby get the match get the match put the luggage get the match that was the best sleeping match this side of heaven wow. I'm talking about the views were spectacular the TV I had never seen this before now y'all seen it but you walk to the bathroom to get ready to shave and you cut the light on the TV's right in the mirror so you can see the mirror and the shower is immaculate and everything. I mean, the, the food was just great. I forgot the point I was making. <laughs> anyway. No, I know what it was. <laughs> no, what I was saying was, with all that being said, I was still a traveler. I had to remember I was going back somewhere. I was not that I was doing a business meeting. I had work to do. I could just stay in the room all day long. She stayed in the room. She had a great time. Yes, she did. But <laughs> But I couldn't stay there while I had work to do. Yeah. See, sometimes we forget that we're traveling through life yeah. and we get so fixated on the temporary here and now that we don't get the work done. Mm. And God said, listen, you're a traveler. You're a sojourner. You, you ain't home yet. You are making your way home. Yeah. Don't get fixated here. Because no. believe me, the four seasons would be the projects in heaven. Come on. Wow. It would be good enough to be the projects in heaven. Where we're going, where you, what you got, what God's got for you, yeah. it'll be like the 16th seasons. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be fabulous. But I had to realize, not just I'm a traveler, but I am an ambassador. Yeah. An ambassador is somebody sent to represent somebody else yeah. and their interests. 
God says in 2 Corinthians 5, you and I are ambassadors for Christ. So while we're here, you have an assignment. I have an assignment. God expects us to do what he's commissioned us to do. And that's the only way you can be your authentic self is to do what God told you to do. If you're not doing what God told you to do, you're not being authentic to who you are now because the old you is dead. You're new in Christ. So we have to remember our authentic self. And the last thing we have to do to move from being a destroyer of Christ to a demonstrating Christ, we have to, and this, this struck me this week. I just finished uh, on Friday. I finished reading through the Bible for the year. Uh, that's, that's an annual thing, thing I think I share with you guys. Every year I read through the entire Bible, and I buy a different Bible every year, and I read through and highlight it and put notes in it. Because when I'm gone, every member of my family is going to have a personal Bible for me. Amen. All my kids, my grandkids, every, I want them to have, a, have the word in their hand. I want them to see Papa's notes. I want, to be, I want them to be able to preach from my Bible. Amen. I want them to be able to, they open it up, they oh, I can teach from this. That's what I want. But as I was finishing, uh, how many of y'all ever read the book of Revelation? Amen. How many of y'all avoid Revelation? <laughs> <Y'all>, <laughs> how many of y'all read through it real fast? <laughs> See, I me, mean, I read slow through Revelation. I, I love the book of, to me, it's like the end of a good movie or a good book that you've been enthralled with, and you don't want it to end. You ever have a book or a movie you like near the end, and you start slowing down? Because you don't want to finish it? That's how I am with Revelation. Why? Because I realize I'm going to be in heaven while all this happened down here. (laughs) So for y'all down here, it's going to suck to be y'all. But for the rest of us in heaven, I ain't going through all that. But as I was getting near the end, the last chapter, chapter 22, there's the verse that says, Revelation 22, 12. Behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to get to everyone according to their work. And so, if we're going to move from uh, destroying Christ to demonstrating Christ, we, we have to learn to eagerly anticipate Christ's swift and soon return and his rewards. See, a lot of times, we've gotten so comfortable that we forget that Jesus is coming back. Sometimes we get so fixated on the here and now that we think that life is just going to continue to go. Matter of fact, one of the signs that we're getting at the end is that people will think less and less about Christ's return. They will just think, you know what, it's always gone like this. It'll always be this way. And Jesus said in, in Revelation, I'm coming quickly. And I'm coming sooner than you think. I, I told this story, but I want to hear it again. <laughs> when I was a kid, I remember one year my mom went away to a, a church conference in Memphis. It was an annual gathering, the Church of God in Christ, big, the Memphis Convention. Yeah, and so she went away to it, man, and I was like, man, we chilling like villains. I mean, we eating Big Mac every day. My dad was like, two Big Macs a person every day. <laughs> I was love. I hated Big Mac by the end of that week. I was out of Big Mac. But we also had chores to do. And each of us had to take turns doing dishes. Now, I tell you, I hated doing dishes. Let me mop the floors. I love mopping some floors. You tell me to put dishes. I'm like, oh, I hate putting your hand in the water and all that food just floats around and touch your hand. I hated it. So I had this brilliant idea. Well, I'm going to let the dishes pile up. And I'm just going to soak them and wash them before mama get back. And they piled so much they wouldn't fit in the sink. I said, I know. Because my siblings like, we ain't doing them. You just, it's your turn this week. You're going to do the dishes. I said, that's all right. I'm going to just put them all in the bathtub. Let them soak all in the bathtub. Put some Tide in the water. Y'all don't know nothing about no washing dishes. Come on now. And I said, they're going to soak. And if all the dishes going to come. I'm going to wash it real easy. Rest them dry. I'm going to put them up. Cool. Because mama coming back in two days. But mama fooled me. Came back a day early. And you know your kids are doing something wrong. They're trying to divert your attention. Hey, Mama, how was your trip? You don't need to go to the bathroom, do you? Oh, Mama, I miss you so You know you're my favorite Mama. I don't never want no Mama like you, Mama, because you're my girl, Mama. I love you, Mama. And she was like, <coughs> why are dishes in the tub? Go get your switch. See, I failed to realize that Mama was coming soon and quicker than I thought. 
and her reward was with her. <laughs> so we don't understand. Jesus is coming quick. He said, I'm coming quick. In other words, he says, when I come back, you're going to have time to get ready for me coming back. I'm not going to give you an advance notice and call and text and say, you know, I'm on 270. Getting out, you know, I'm getting off of 270 on the 70 East right now. And you got 18 minutes or however long to get ready. He's just going to show up. And it's going to be like, boom. And it's sooner than we think. And he says, I'm going to give to everyone their reward. For the work that they've done, Ephesians 2.10, what? We have created a new in Christ Jesus for what? For good works, which you plan in advance for us to do. God wants to reward us. He wants to bless you. You can't imagine what God has in store for those who are obedient to do what he's told them to do. And when he shows up, he says, I got a reward with me for you and for you, for every one of y'all. But I'm going to close with this thought. For those who don't do what he told them to do, and their works and their deeds are evil. He got a reward for you too. You will receive recompense for the deeds done in this body. Yeah. The Bible says that. And, and your works, if you're a Christian, it's not according to church membership or baptism. That's, that's the starting place. Yeah. But then God saved you to actually do something. Yeah. There's no such thing as a sit on the sideline and do something Christian that brings glory to God. It, it, it isn't. God has created you for good works. Yeah. And so he's saying, I'm coming quickly. My reward's with me. So the question I have, is your life demonstrating or destroying the testimony of Christ? Mm -hmm. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you right now.